Hello, in this video we are doing abductions and adductions with our feet wide. For this version of the exercise, you are going to need a wall or a kitchen counter or a door or something like that that you can put your feet against. And you may also want or need a cushion, two cushions, or maybe even your cork posturol to put underneath your neck. Um, I'll talk you through when and why you might know that you need to use that modification underneath your head. So we are going to get ourselves started in a vague wall frog type position. So we are making sure that our pelvis and our lower back is flat to the floor. If you go too close to the wall, and you don't have the mobility at your hips and your feet, you are going to notice that your pelvis kind of tucks under and that your tailbone lifts off the floor slightly. You're going to feel more grounded through your rib cage and through your lower back, but it's going to feel like your pelvis is slightly suspended in the air. I don't want you doing that. I want your pelvis to feel completely flat to the floor, so you are going to have contact with your tailbone all the way through your spine. So my lower back is flat here, my bottom of my rib cage is flat here, but I'm also flat through my sacrum and my tailbone too. If you are noticing that your rib cage puffs up towards the ceiling and that you're not grounded through your um, rib cage and lower back, what I want you to do is put a cushion or two cushions underneath your head and that's just going to help change the angle of the bottom of the rib cage. We're going to be doing an exercise where we're mobilizing our hips in this kind of rotational um, way and it's really important that the rib cage stays grounded here because our hip flex is attached to the bottom of our rib cage. So we cannot mobilize our hips functionally if we're not considering what our rib cage is doing as well. If your rib cage is flaring up and lifting up off the floor and you're trying to move your hips, you're not moving your hips through their full range of movement, however weird that may seem. So we've got to make sure that the angle is occurring at the hip, not occurring in the lower back and not occurring kind of in the rib cage. The pelvis stays flat and that's gonna enable our hips to rotate properly whilst we're here. My feet are um, about parallel with my knees, so not too high, not too low. And this time, because we're doing abductions and adductions with our feet wide, you may have already watched my video on feet close, we're taking our feet a bit wide. And as we do this, what's really important is that we consider what parallel means at our feet. So as a posture teacher, one of the things that I've realized over the years is that most people don't have a clue what a parallel foot is. If I say put your feet parallel, I think a combination of people measuring from their big toes but also being very disconnected with their feet, most people will have their feet slightly angled outwards. Can you see there in the video that my uh, side of my left foot is wider than my left ankle? So what we are making sure that we are doing is even though my knees are wide and in some external rotation, we are making sure that our feet are parallel and it's going to feel slightly pigeon-toed when you're doing that properly. So you're looking to keep the outside edges of your feet straight up towards the ceiling. They are not off out to the side. This is absolutely critical for this exercise. So the feet stay parallel facing up towards the ceiling and the knees are in some external rotation but also some abduction as well. What we are going to do, and with your hands, by the way, you can have palms facing our arms out to the side, or you can have your hands behind your head, if that feels good, and if you like that extra opening across your chest, but I don't want your rib cage lifting as you do this. So we are going to draw our knees together, and they have to be in a position where your knees are going to touch without the pelvis moving. So if you've taken your feet too wide and you lack hip mobility, internal hip rotation in this case, as you bring your knees together, you might notice that you're kind of lifting the pelvis up or you're doing something in the pelvis to try and create the movement. The pelvis stays still, the knees draw together, and if your knees don't draw together, you need to bring your uh, feet a little bit closer together. You've just gone a little bit too wide to begin with. 
As we draw these knees together, we've got to watch that the toes don't adjust themselves. So again, if your hip mobility isn't there and your feet are too wide and you draw your knees in, you might notice that you take the feet wide in order to force that movement at the hip, which tells me that your feet are compensating for a lack of hip mobility. I want the feet parallel. That's going to put the work into the internal hip rotators and abductors. And if you need to, bring your feet closer together. It doesn't matter how wide your feet are. It matters that we're doing this properly and not compensating with our feet. So we're making sure that the knees touch and you give them a little squeeze and you might feel how that wakes up things in your inner thighs and in the kind of outside of your hips here. And then very slowly, as we open our knees, we're doing this sort of position. We're very, very, very slowly and with control, opening our legs out into this wide position. So what I don't want you doing is going from this internal rotation, really overly thinking about your knees or being competitive about how wide they go, flopping them open quickly and then them kind of bouncing. Did you see how there I like opened up my knees and then they flopped and they bounced? My feet are completely inactive here and they're not doing anything. And what we're going to focus on for the rest of the cues is really focusing on our feet here as being the thing that actually drives the movement. So we're gonna be really controlled and active in what our feet are doing. So back to thinking about that parallel foot alignment thing again. It's gonna make you work hard in your feet. You're gonna to have to point your toes to kind of push the big toe joint um, into the middle of where your feet are, and it's gonna make you wake up your arches of your feet. So what I don't wanna see here is disengaged feet or big toe joints that are wider than the ankles, because this is just knees flopping around using momentum and gravity rather than it being muscles controlling and doing the work. We are trying to create an independence of movement in between your feet and in between your hips. So we are starting off taking our feet wide, taking our feet parallel, which is gonna feel more pigeon toed than you think. Look at the outside edges of your feet, not the inside edges of your feet. And to start with, you are going to test that you can squeeze your knees together without having to adjust your feet or your pelvis to get you there and then take your feet more narrow if needs be. And then once you've set up that position, I want you to think about your feet leading the movement rather than your knees. So we are going to, with control, start to open up the book of our feet. We're gonna point our toes into this banana shape and we're gently opening up our knees only as far as they can go whilst keeping the feet super active with the big toe joints staying above the ankles. And then we come back in. I will know if you're cheating on this one. Make sure those knees touch. I'll know if you're cheating because you'll be able to do this quickly and you won't be making noises about how much your legs are working, okay? So if this feels suspiciously easy, you're probably going too fast and you're probably cheating with your feet. So my feet are super active. I'm pointing my toes as the knees come out. I'm trying to keep that big toe joint stacked on top of the ankle. I'm not letting it go wider. There's no movement up and down. There's no noise of my feet against the wall. If you can hear your feet swishing, you are moving your feet. You'll not be able to hear anything and you're going to have to do this in a really slow, controlled way if you are doing it properly. So also try and make sure that you keep your shins parallel to the floor and they're not moving up and down. So I'm just gonna move through a couple more of these um, rotations here. My knees come in, the feet go flat to the wall, they stay parallel, my knees squeeze to wake up the internal rotators. I peel my feet gently off the wall, I point my toes to really get the arches of my feet cramping and to keep my feet on those train track parallel alignment. There is no movement through the feet either, sorry, other than the peeling onto the outside edge. So that's what's confusing, is that there is some movement here, because obviously your ankles are rotating, but you're trying to squeeze your feet so hard into plantar flexion that your um, feet are not able to move sideways like this, 
nor are they able to move up and down. We're really trying to keep those toes stacked on top of the ankles. And the truth of the matter is, is that when you're doing this exercise properly, you're going to notice that you have a lot less movement through your knees, which are actually reflecting what's happening or not happening at your hips. You're going to notice that by controlling your feet, you may only be able to get your knees to about here. And that's absolutely fine, but you are learning that you have very little rotation in your hips when the feet are also behaving. We need to train this range of movement to coax the function out rather than just doing this exercise flopping and allowing the feet to move. That is not gonna open up your hips. Getting those feet cramping and working Getting the ankles and the calves of the feet cramping and working is a really nice sign that you are starting to wake up the lower legs. The more functional your lower legs become, the more functional your hips are going to become as well. And so as time goes on, you may then start being able to take your feet wider and wider. I can't go that wide, especially my right hip, which is a bit stuck. So I can't go that wide because my knees don't even touch at the beginning. But over time, you might notice that you can do that. But just be super cautious that the wider that your feet go, you're not forgetting about that when you're setting yourself up and that you're not compromising the foot position just to get the knees wide. Keep the feet as narrow as they need to be in order to stay on those train tracks with the toe and the ankle in alignment with each other. That is abductions and adductions with the feet wide. And also check out um, the video that I did for abductions and adductions with the feet close as well. Enjoy.